this is what you have what happens when you leave children alone for a <laughs> couple of hours hi i'm paul i'm tim this is vaping world last night paul <sighs> got me drunk and then we came back and we did our usual I, I love this i love this this is what he tells his wife oh yeah i didn't really want to drink paul just like, kept making me oh, i'm sorry babes oh, i didn't mean to throw up in the bleeding kitchen but it was Paul's fault. If, I didn't throw up by the way. No, no, he didn't. No, I mean, that's, the, that's the extreme example. What I'm saying is that he loves to blame me for getting him drunk. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> like I'm some sort of bad influence. Anyway. Anyway, this is what us children do when we come home late at night. Yeah. We build stupid coils with stupid wire. Mm. I, I, I rocked up yesterday with some of this someone gave me in a shop, Eric actually, uh, Sims, Sim 6, gave me, just as a little sampler, some 18 gauge. It's about a mil thick. It's like a bleeding coat hanger. <laughs> so I thought, hey, let's, let's, let's just try that. I'll try that when you've had a few. <laughs> Luckily it couldn't fire. <laughs> it's it's not that it couldn't fire, we couldn't actually get the top cap off. Yeah, we couldn't put it's it back outside in the, in the, the realms device. of the top cap. It's, it's uh, what should we call it? It's around 0.8. It's Just a, to let no, you know. Point eight, sorry, 0.08. It's a, this, is, this is how you can judge how drunk we were, yeah, between the two of us, yeah? Okay, you look at those two, yeah? I did this side and Paul did that side. He yeah. was definitely worse for wear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, who, so who's getting who drunk, yeah? Right, anyway. <laughs> Why are we showing you this? We're, we're show, we're, actually, we're showing you the CLT. It's a little dripper from Infinite. Inakin? Infinite, 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 the famous clone makers. Oh. But they've taken the plunge, cut their teeth, if you like, on all those, those clones they've been making for ages now. And they had a bash at their own device. Yeah, and it's an interesting one actually. There's a lot um, going on. There is. I've had it for a little while and I've had a little play with it. Uh, and it is an interesting one. It's a bit different from the usual. I'm just going to pull these out. These heavy lumps of metal. Mm. Here. Put them back in the garden clothes pegs you found them from. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those. <laughs> they are quite amusing actually. Look at it, look at how thick that wire is. I've tried desperately to look around all the devices we've got kicking around it and find something we can build it in. I reckon if we took the spring out, we might be able to wind it a little tighter and just maybe single coil it and something. Because you can get away with a smaller coil then. Says Paul Hoping. Anyway, we're going to pretend that I'm opening this right now in front of your eyes. Um, so I'm going to show you the box and then we're going to do an uppy closey and then we're going to play about a bit together. Okay. So, there we go. Look, we've just got the CLT from Infinite. <laughs> nice little box. Let's have a look up closely. Infinite hologram. Nice little box, actually. Nice little tough one. Magnetic front. Do like a magnetic flap. Sorry, enough phone. I can't remember how this actually came together in the first place, so this is a rough... Um, guide to what it came like. <laughs> An approximation of what's yeah. in the box. Uh, I like the fact that they have actually printed the uh, instructions on the front of it. Quite nice actually. On the inside of the lid of the box, quite like that. There is some spare screws for your terminals and some spare hurrings. There is a... Look at those. Ah! I see. These are grubs. Yeah, you can do grub or screw. And we do like a grub. A grub is much better than a screw. Yeah, does it come with a little Allen key for those? It does. Excellent. Um, there is an Allen key which is around somewhere. Yeah, it was in the box. It was. <laughs> you get a <laughs> screwdriver. I'll show you that in a sec. We get, this is not a tank section. It is a bit of nice Pyrex glass. That is actually a drip tip, kids. Like a tough cap. It is, it is. And then there's like an adapter section in there. I'm going to show you all this when we take it apart. I'll bring this back into the equation. So let's go straight to this baby here. Now what we've got <coughs> within this, um, 
we have our <coughs> chuff cap. This is actually the chuff cap section as well. This part here, and I'll show you that. So we have this drip tip, which is quite a nice little drip tip actually. I will pull it out and show you. Double O rings on there. Very nice little no alter section. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see if I can get that in focus for you. Ooh, fading, fading, fading. No, 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 it's not going to do it. Doesn't want to play, does it? Oh, there you go. Oh, there so you as you go. say that. Wow. <laughs> so there's a knurled section at the bottom there. A couple of little air dispension fins on it, as we like to call them. Heat dispersion. Heat dispersion, there we go. This is an adapter that comes out of here. Now, the idea of this, I'm sticking with the drip tip for the moment, so we can use that in there. We can yank the standard drip tip out and we can pull the adapter out there's an adapter in here that unscrews just a piece of delrin material or peak there's a slot isn't there cutting the top of it so you can put your nail in there and start it off there is i'll show you that from an angle can you see the slot across the top there there we go so we can remove that section and we can put in this section here, which is a larger ball. So we're going from that to that, basically. I don't actually think you needed this in there personally, but it is an insulator of sorts. Then we can use either the glass strip tip over the top, or you can use just a standard strip tip in it. Or, well, I say standard, chuff cap we call it. So there's your options there. So plenty of options, glass, chuff, adapter. Right. I think that glass one looks really nice. Um, I don't know, I think you put that on there, seeing the O-rings through there. Yeah, so oh, I know you've, you've got an O-ring phobia, but I, I quite like that. I, I have, I do prefer it to vape with if I'm gonna be doing clouds with this. Now, things to know about this device, it does have an adjustable 510 copper centre pin, which is rather nice. Um, these airflow slots, you can see a nice chunky monkeys, both sides. Now, what is different about this device is the airflow, in my opinion, apart from the drip tips, and I hope I'm gonna be able to do this because I tell you what, off a device, it's not that easy to do. But I'm going to give it a whirl. Doesn't help the fact that I've actually cut both my thumbs as well. So, um, uh, on, on, on camphor. I've done it on threads on top caps before. I can't like separate top cap from atty. <laughs> Those threads are going to be razor sharp. So. Yeah. So you can close all three down at the same time if you turn it one direction. Can you see that? There we go. But something that's unusual about this is that happens obviously on both sides but if we turn it the other direction watch what happens and this is quite clever sorry if i'm shaking a bit here can you see we have the top hole is half closed top slot should i say the next one's fully open the next one's fully open i'm going to keep turning this shouldn't be this stiff but it's because it's got no juice on it top one is closed and the next one starts closing there we go we're down to half of the available airflow there so we've got one slot completely open the next one half open we then keep turning again and you've got the next one and you can go right down so obviously if you're using this you've got a nice big two mil hole there if you're using this with a smaller drip tip and your two mil hole you can so this gives it a kind of a multi-function device. So we have written on it there. Now bear in mind, I haven't actually read this. I think that says Deaf Internet V3. Definite? It is. Oh yeah, specs on. Sorry, I'm going to hand that over to Paul. Who's going to confirm? No, that's just infinite. It's just a stylized eye. It's just the font. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's just a very stylized eye at the beginning of the, uh, the name there, but it's infinite. Yeah, okay. okay. So, 
all said and done, let's get down to the deck. Check out that baby. That's right. a deck and a half, I like that. That is a deck and a half. Now what we're going to do is we're going to rip out these screws because we don't like them, we like proper hex screws. So inside here you can see there's a lot of lines, a lot of engineering going on in there. Not a lot of smooth places, a lot of ridges. I'm not a big fan of that, but hey, we'll come back to that. So we have two O-rings here. We have a heatsink style at the base, two O-rings, and then these three humongous holes in here. Um, although I would say 18 gauge is probably too big for this device, you can get two 18s through the center positive post on this. Slightly larger hole in the positive post, which is what you would expect on any dual coil device. There is a bit of a juice well on it. I wouldn't say it's massive. Um, it's probably only about three mil deep, but you can see there's a juice well. The each of the negative posts are actually, I think they're actually milled, um, but I wouldn't want to swear on that. Very hard to see, and the positive post with a del rim at the base doesn't turn at all any of these posts they're very very solid and they have to sit fairly high the reason they sit very high is that you get the ability to put place your coil lower or higher depending on where you're putting your airflow setting on it so anyway we're going to whip out these phillips head screws and we're going to chuck in we're going to put in half an ohm 0.5 no no come on let's be brave all right point two. Point two. Is that is point two being brave? Well, it's not being super brave. It's being kind of reasonable. Reasonable. <laughs> Let, yeah. Let's be reasonable, people. No, come on. Let's go even braver. Let's go for a <coughs> point, <coughs> point one ohm build. Point one. Okay. Point one. We we'll use uh, twenty two. The only reason why I'm going to go for a point one uh, is because this is meant to be a cloud chasing atty. So let's put a cloud chasing coil in it. Yeah, I suppose for a mech. Yeah, okay, well we will come back with the build in two secs. So there we go, we've changed it a little bit because we didn't have any 20 gauge wire, so we've gone for 22 gauge um, around a two mil, uh, which is coming out at 3.86 wraps it's saying, so there we go, we've got four wraps. So point one was our target, so we're gonna be there or thereabouts-ish, hopefully. So, now these, Decks have got a decent size about them, um, so we should. We need to manipulate it a little bit. We should be able to almost put our wire in place and then just play about with it afterwards and snip it down a bit. We will see. So here we go. So I want it. I just wanted to put me. I'll put you. just to hold it in place while I do it. So there we go. So I'm gonna push that push that in as hard as I can, keeping the coil towards so I'm pushing towards the centre post as I'm doing this. And I'm gonna at that point I'm just gonna lightly clamp the negative. That's it. Now I'm gonna do a rough trim on the on the leads at the moment because I've been stabbed so many times recently. <laughs> I can't bear any more blood. <laughs> so there we go. Second coil going in, nice and simple. So there we go. Stick in my little coiler. Push it with my finger towards the positive. Roughly with my eyes on gauging this length. I'm just going to clamp down a little bit on the positive now. That's what I like about working with a larger gauge wire. You can play a little bit more with it on the when you're actually clamping it, uh, clamping it down. I've noticed that you can actually tighten up the screws. 
cut off your excess and then easily maneuver them I mean if you want to move something closer or pull it further away you're, you're not hurting it um, with your camphor with smaller wire gauge wires the problem is a lot of the time when you're doing it what actually happens is you tighten down your screw if you try and under your screw to move it slightly um, it's already damaged the wire enough to actually get it to not to break at that point so with these thicker gauges you don't get that so I'm just going to level it up a little bit this is a very rough build but when you've had quite a bit to drink the night before you don't want to be too technical do you it looks like it will work to me right. there we go let's do a quick resistance check on that What do we say? One point one five. Yeah, I was looking for point one, wasn't we? You're a little bit higher. Yeah, well, we had to change our game plan, didn't we? Yeah. So I bet you I could get that to point one just by playing about with those leads a little bit, though. By uh, bringing the coils in. Closer. Bringing the coils towards the centre a little bit more, but I do want to get airflow around them. I will, oh. I'll squeeze them in a tiny bit but not too much and I, I don't think that's going to play too much with the image. So anyway, we're going to prepare some cotton and put it in there in a sec. So there we go, I've given them a little pull tug and a tighten up and there you go, playing nice and evenly. So we're going to stick some cotton in this and um, give it a try. We've got some Japanese cotton in there. Now, neither Paul or I are massive cloud chasers. Um, so this will be quite this is a bit of fun so what we're talking about here is we're talking about where we want to get the cotton just down to hit the deck but we need to we need to have space underneath and between the positive and the coil so we want space all the way around the coil for a cloud bill so what we're doing here I'm just gonna slightly trim these they're probably a little bit too long so I'm gonna slightly sorry I'm going to slightly trim these and then we're going to prime them and then we're going to go for it. So yeah, you just want the cotton so when it drapes down from the uh, coil it's just skimming the bottom of your juice well if you like. So it's just picking up the juice that's in effect sloshing around there. But uh, it works we're better go? that way. What are we going to use? Ah, hang on, I've got something for you. Oh gosh, here we go. I've got something for you mate. It's not a bill is it? Sorry? Not a bill, is it? Nah. Hang on, where is it? This is my cherry pie. Cherry pie. Cherry pie. I hope it's got Creamy. a lot of VG in it, sir. Creamy custard. There we go. Tim, this is bloody 85%. Right, here we go. Let's prime up our coils, get them to touch our tapes. And what is this cherry pie? Cherry pie. It really works as a clouding juice because it's for some reason I can't get enough flavour of the cherry to work as a sort of flavour at it. Right. But it works really nicely at the high temperatures when you're when you're clouding. Oh sounds good sir. Yeah it tastes nice. Right, so here we go. So the, what you'll see is, what I've actually done is I've used this little bit of camphor just to express this a little bit to you. So we pushed the cotton down either side and then I've made sure it's open by putting this in there and actually pushing the cotton open on both sides. So you can see there's a nice big air hole slot there. So that's how that's going to stay. Tiny little bit more juice on there. There is a juice well in the bottom of this, so we can drop a little bit of excess in there, which is quite handy when you, especially when you're going this low. But obviously we can drip straight through the drip tip. So uh, let's just check that this is producing some vapour. Mm. Quite a bit of vapour out there. Quite fierce. What are you running out there? 
not that much, 30 watts, that's all. 30 watts, which equates to that down to only about two and a half volts, isn't it? Exactly, if we crank that up, which I can do quite easily on this device without actually wanting to. So there we go, 50 watts. I think that's a bit of vapour coming off of there. Should we give it a vape? Go on then. All right, we're back. To pay homage to the cloud chasers, we have put the glass strip tip on, which is giving us as much air as we can. In fact, we're going to go even madder. We're going to take out the little adapter in there because we don't need that, do we? And I will just let you know, and Paul will verify this, my wife has just put her head around the door and said, I hope you two are going to clear up in here, we're going to have, <laughs> uh, we have dinner in here, <laughs> and all these clouds in here, we haven't even started yet, don't start winding us up, teasing boys. Right, so, 50 watts, 2.78 at 0.15. You like that? I'm quite impressed with that. <laughs> I knew it was a good one. Mm. That is a nice flavour. That has got a lot of air in it. That's totally... I mean, yeah, there's no restriction at all with those amount of air hole slots on there. Yeah, you know, that's just like not firing it, just those... It's just like breathing in. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. So let's add something else into the mix here. There's, there's clouds. There's clouds, all right. That's bloody good. <laughs> that is bloody good. I'm going to have another one before I pass it back. I'm going to have another one before I pass it back. He says he doesn't realise that I've only just started with the wattage. Give us it here. All right, let's take it up to the mech box level. See if we can get it to about 3.7 volts. Let's see what that gives us. That's how brave he's getting. Yeah. He won't be when my missus comes through the door. <laughs> no, she's a lovely girl. She don't shout at me. She saves it all for me. <laughs> <laughs> she can actually probably hear us as she's walking by and it's just all steaming up inside her mm. really for when Paul goes. Ooh, do you know what 3.6 is coming out at? Oh, 95. How does he do it? Right, for this task I have to lean back away because I'm Make sure you've got enough away. juice in there. Last thing you want is a burning. Bye. <laughs> cool. I like that. I like that. I can actually, I'll probably put too much juice in it. I'm actually drinking it to be honest with you when I'm leaning back. Put too much juice in it. Yeah. Mm. Find that happens, just burn your way through it and then all of a sudden you'll hit a sweet spot of juice in the, in the cotton sick. and then you don't, then you know you can hit it. Yeah. Don't tip it back, mate. Whoa. <laughs> right. Pass it over, mate. We're going to take it onto my lovely parallel box. Hope this works because I've rebuilt it. This is probably more like a hundred watts now. Three point seven. Yeah. Precious batteries, aren't they? Yeah. Here he goes. Flames! Flames! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can see that on camera. I'm hoping that <laughs> turbo flames are coming out of the top. A little bit burning, he says. A little bit of juice. There we go. Oh my lord. Go on, give that a go. <laughs> Seriously, it was like... <laughs> Lucky it wasn't in my cupboard at the time. Right. Oh yeah, so you handed it back to me. <laughs> Lucky it wasn't in my cupboard at the time, he says, handing it back. Oh no, you want to go? <laughs> <laughs> Here goes, kids. 
Master Blaster, that's all I can say. Right. So, obviously, you want another go? You yeah, another I'm go, loving it. it. I'm loving it. Paul has turned himself into a cloud chaser in one final session. There you go, look at that. Right. Bring it back over here, you. <laughs> we got to try this another way, because obviously... <coughs> We, we would put the small drip tip in it, but I'm not putting it in with that amount of heat going for it. Anyway, the CLT from Infinite is definitely bundles of air, cloud chasing, good fun for people like us. I'm sure there's people out there that could actually do a lot better job of it than we've done. Yeah. And demonstrate it a lot better without <laughs> acting like a couple of children. Great fun. Great fun. Right. So there we are with a glass trip tip on it. How it comes, it's a 22 mil device. How it comes is uh, all made of stainless steel construction, has three drip tips. It has one glass, one del rim and stainless steel, and one del rim with the adapters. Personally, it is not a cloud, it is a cloud chasing yeah. device. It's not a flavor device in any way, shape or form. So I don't see the need for that small drip tip. No. It's prob probably handy for some people. But I really don't think you're going to get flavour out of this device. I have actually tried it with the small drip tip and a larger coil in it, giving us, I can't, I think about 0.4 or something like that. And I didn't get a lot of flavour out of it, to be honest with you. No, if the chamber's too big, I think you need to run it hot yeah. to really get that, get to maximise what you can out of the juice. Like I say, this, this is a juice that seems to be fairly weak, but running hot, you're getting a nice flavour. Mm. You are getting a nice flavour. Yeah. In, you know, in the context of cloud chasing, this is a nice flavour. Hmm. So, the Infinite CLT version 3 RDA we bought from angelfiremods.co.uk. It was £27.99p, uh, which is about $35. Um, in my opinion, if you're a cloud chaser, you're going to do a lot better than we've done with this device. <laughs> so, um, enjoy it. Um, thank you very much for watching. Yeah, budget for loads of juice. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Believe, honestly, I think I've done five mil in the course of this review. And I'm not going to stop him. I can tell he's going to carry on. So, hey, what the hell. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching. Bye. Take care.